Hey guys, so Monday was not a good day for Herschel Walker and his campaign to defeat incumbent Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock from Georgia, and this really is a big problem for Republicans as they try to take back the U.S. Senate. They need 51 seats to do so, and Georgia will be their 51st seat. If Republicans cannot win Georgia, their chances at taking back the Senate drop down to just 11%. Democrats will have an 89% chance at maintaining their majority in the upper chamber of Congress as as long as they can carry Georgia. Let's say they also win Arizona and Pennsylvania, two states that both have likely Democratic ratings, and their odds go all the way up to 97%. A win in Georgia for Democrats will basically spell defeat for Republicans as they attempt to recapture Senate control in this year's midterms. And so basically what happened in Georgia was Herschel Walker had an accusation put out against him that he actually paid for an abortion over a decade ago, despite running on a very pro-life platform. Now, first of all, his pro-life platform is not helping him in Georgia. He wants to ban abortions throughout the entire country, so a federal ban on abortion is what Herschel Walker is calling for, and that is nowhere near popular in the state of Georgia. They voted for Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential election, and so Herschel Walker is now being made to look like a hypocrite, and even if this isn't true, this isn't going to help his campaign. Now, his campaign didn't actually take too much of a hit just with this accusation, as actually what happened after that really hurt his chances. So after Herschel Walker got these accusations put out against him, Christian Walker, Herschel Walker's adult son, actually came out and denounced his father and his campaign, saying that he was somebody that destroyed the lives of other people, and then called him somebody who was not a family man and had threatened to kill their family, in fact, at some point in the past. And the probably the most damaging part was that nobody in Herschel Walker's family actually wanted him to run for the Senate, but instead of listening to them, apparently he gave them the middle finger and has basically been on this two-year campaign to defeat Warnock. And so this attack is really what's going to hurt Herschel Walker. I mean, this is an attack from a very close member of his family, somebody that knows him very well, and the odds for Herschel Walker to win this race really didn't go down at all until the end of the day when Christian Walker made these attacks on Twitter. So if you see the betting markets over the last 24 hours, they're pretty stagnant, especially when this story broke. But only after Christian Walker made those tweets did Walker's chances go down significantly from 49 cents per share all the way down to 41. And today we'll be taking a look at the Georgia Senate election, how important it really is to both parties, and of course, who will eventually win. So the Senate map here is very, very competitive this year, 45-45 without any of the toss-up races filled in. And so I'm going to start off by giving Democrats and Republicans some states they're probably going to win. So Democrats are probably going to see victories in both Colorado and New Hampshire, while Republicans are probably going to win in Florida, as well as Wisconsin and North Carolina. I'll also even give give the Republicans Ohio, this being a state that Tim Ryan is making very competitive against J.D. Vance, but as of this point in time, J.D. Vance is still the favored candidate, while Democrats have a very good chance at winning in both Pennsylvania and Arizona. There's some people that are saying that Pennsylvania is becoming close, but I mean, Pennsylvania was always going to be close. The margin in the polls for Fetterman has dropped from 8% to 6% over the last couple of weeks, but John Fetterman was never going to win by 8%. I mean, that's just an outrageous margin for Democrats in a year like 2022, and so now we're left with just two races, the races in Nevada and Georgia. Democrats have an advantage because they only have to win one out of these two races to hold on to the 50 seats they need for a majority, while Republicans have to capture both seats currently held by Democrats if they want to win back the Senate. And so that's why Democrats start off in a better position just by default, and at this point, I can see Democrats winning in Georgia but losing in Nevada, despite Nevada being a state that's been traditionally more democratic. The state of Georgia is faring much better for Warnock than Nevada is for Catherine Cortez Masto at this point in time. And right now, Walker is down by 2.1% in the polls. Warnock has maintained this lead for quite a while, ever since he first took it in late June to early July. But at one point, Herschel Walker was a clear favorite. He was even ahead by 5.7% in the polling average for quite a while. And then that lead has dipped down, and he is now no longer the favorite. 
every single major forecast had a Herschel Walker defeating Ralphie Warnock in the early half of the calendar year, but Warnock's lead is pretty significant now. He's had it for such a long time, and polling in the governor election shows a very different story for both parties. Despite Walker doing terribly in the Senate race, Brian Kemp, the Republican governor of Georgia, leads by 6.2% against Stacey Abrams. And to put this into context, they ran in 2018 against each other, and Brian Kemp only won by 1.4%. Yes, incumbency is going to help Kemp, but the fact that he's doing so much better than he was four years ago in the polls shows that Herschel Walker is probably not being underestimated in the Senate election as these pollsters poll the same samples of voters when they poll for the Senate and gubernatorial elections. And so as of this point in time, Brian Kemp is doing eight points better than Herschel Walker in the Senate race, and that's a big reason as to why the polls are probably going to be accurate in Georgia in 2022 like they were in both 2021 and 2020. In early 2021, there were two Senate runoffs in Georgia to determine who controlled the majority for the first half of Biden's presidential term. Joe Biden was the first Democrat to win a presidential election in Georgia since Bill Clinton in 1992, and so when he did that in 2020, it sparked huge momentum for Democrats in those two runoff races, because in Georgia, you have to win a majority of votes. If you don't get to 50% in the first round, you will have to run in a runoff, and the top two candidates are the two candidates that it advance. So these two races essentially gave Democrats the majority a little bit over a year ago. Democrats were at 48 seats before this. Republicans had 52, but they would lose the two seats very quickly to John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. Warnock, of course, won by 2.1% against Kelly Loeffler and Ossoff by 1.2%. And just look at the regular election. You can see the momentum was on the side of the Democrats. Steve Perdue won 49.7% of the vote when there were other candidates in the race. He was very close to winning his second term outright, but then he only won 49.4% in the runoff. John Ossoff expanded his vote share significantly, winning him his first six-year term. He will serve until 2027. But in the special election, we saw Warnock defeat Kelly Loeffler, but he will only serve until next year in early January, unless he wins his re-election. And so in the first round, he won 32%. This was a three-way race. And then in the end, Warnock would win 51%, defeating Kelly Loeffler by two points. And so what's significant about these results is just how close they were to what the polling had suggested. Ossoff, of course, won by 1.2% in the regular election, and polls had him up by 1.8% on election day. While for the special election, Warnock was supposed to win by 2%, and he did win by exactly 2.0% against Kelly Loeffler. So the polling in 2021 was very, very accurate. And that's why polling in 2020, we have little reason to doubt that they're going to be off by too much. Right now, Ralph and Warnock is up by the same lead he was up a year ago, and that is good news for his campaign. The presidential election in Georgia was also predicted pretty accurately. Of course, Joe Biden would go on to defeat Donald Trump by 0.2%, and polls had him up by 1.2%, and a one-point discrepancy between polls and eventual results is basically nothing. The polling was very accurate in Georgia in the previous election. They were also pretty accurate in both 2016 and 2018, and so that's why we have little reason to doubt that they're going to be accurate again this this year, as Herschel Walker, his campaign has not been doing well, and the fact that he's behind is only reasonable. And the worst part for Republicans is that this was a very winnable map. I mean, they made a big mistake with nominating Mehmet Oz in Pennsylvania. If David McCormick was the Republican nominee, he would have a much better chance against John Fetterman. And yes, John Fetterman is going to win in Pennsylvania. Anyone that thinks otherwise is just wrong. Mehmet Oz has run a terrible campaign. He is not going to win in a state that voted for Joe Biden. Pat Toomey barely won his re-election in 2016. The momentum is on the side for John Fetterman in the Keystone State, but I do agree that Ron Johnson and Ted Budd are probably going to win their elections, and J.D. Vance is in a good position overall in Ohio as well, only because he's a Republican in a pretty Republican state. But in Nevada and Georgia, I mean, I would say Democrats initially had a better chance in Nevada with Catherine Cortez Masto, but Adam McSalt is not as bad of a candidate as Herschel Walker is in Georgia. And of course, if Republicans want to win back the majority, they're going to have to defeat Raphael Warnock. And at this point, it doesn't look like they're going to do so, despite the win in Georgia 
being something that should be very easy for the GOP. I mean, Democrats won in 2021. They did win both seats, but this was under some very special circumstances. Of course, Joe Biden won the presidential election in Georgia for the first time as a Democrat in over 20 years, almost 30 years, and then these two Senate races would give Democrats the trifecta, the Senate majority, along with the House majority and the presidency that they had already won. And of course, David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler didn't run very good campaigns either, and that also contributed to their loss. Losses. But Democrats winning in 2021 was under a set of very special circumstances, and those circumstances simply don't exist in 2022. There's not as much momentum for Democrats to win a majority in the upper chamber of Congress, especially since they're probably going to lose the House anyways. And so that's why Georgia should not be as difficult of a win for Republicans as it is at this point in time. In fact, 538 has had Warnock as pretty clearly the favorite candidate according to their forecast for the past two months now. He has a 54% chance at victory. Many of these victories though are in runoffs, which is very possible as there is a libertarian candidate in the race. And so that may make the difference and cause a runoff election between Walker and Warnock. And that runoff will be in December and not January as it was last time. And so if you look at the odds and how they've changed, at one point Herschel Walker had a 62% chance at becoming the next U.S. Senator from Georgia when this forecast was first released, but his odds have been on a continuous downward trend, and now he has just a 46% chance at winning. Ralph Warnock has taken a pretty significant lead. Now, the odds for both candidates are not going to change because of a couple of tweets, but they are going to change because these tweets are going to affect the polling numbers for Herschel Walker, and that's probably going to decrease his chances of winning as a result of poor polling data being released in the next couple of weeks. And in, at this point, Herschel Walker is only expected to win 48.6% of the vote to Ralph Warnock's 49.8%. So he's very close to getting to a majority at this point in time. And in terms of fundraising, things are not looking good for Herschel Walker either. Warnock has raised over $60 million, and this is from the 30th of June. So this is a very old report. Well, a newer report on the 7th of September shows Walker having raked in at just $20 million. And so despite his last filing being significantly later than the last filing for Warnock, he has still raised less than a third of the total that Warnock has been able to take in over the last year. And in the third quarter of 2022, from the beginning of July until the end of September, Ralph Warnock's campaign has raised over $26 million, eclipsing the $17 million that he raised in the second cycle. And you see, you can see from the money alone that there's significantly more momentum behind Ralph Warnock than there is behind Herschel Walker. And so looking at the numbers more specifically, in terms of small individual contributions, Warnock has raised $27 million, almost half of all the money he's gotten, while Herschel Walker has only raised raised 8 million approximately 40% of the money that he's taken in. So really not that big of a difference, to be honest, it's at 46% for Ralph and Warnock. But you can see here that this is a significantly older report. And also $27 million is a lot more than $8 million. And so that'll be it for this video. The Senate election in Georgia is going to be definitely one to watch, as well as the one in Nevada. But like I said in my video yesterday, I do believe Democrats at this point are going to win the Senate with Ralph Warnock winning his re-election in Georgia. But I do have Republicans now favored in the silver state of Nevada. So let me know in the comments down below, do you think Ralph Warnock will win his re-election? And do you think this news, as well as the tweets from Christian Walker, are going to make a significant effect on this race? Thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Make sure to like it down below if you enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't to stay updated with the latest midterm news and I'll see you guys in the next video.